I'm Oscar. And I'm Dan. And today we're in Country 94, Bolivia. <laughs> We're Oscar and Dan, two boys from Sweden with a passion for the world. In 2019, we decided to change the course of our lives, leave university, and see as much of the world as possible. This year, we're aiming to visit our 100th country together, an adventure that has brought us to countries like Brazil, Morocco, Uzbekistan, the Philippines, Saudi Arabia, and many, many more. This video is our first from our incredible time in country 94 of Bolivia, and the story begins at the airport in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Good morning, guys, from Sao Paulo, Guarulhos. What are you saying? Bom dia. Bom dia from Guarulhos Airport, where we are about to fly to our 94th country of Bolivia. But it feels so fun to be back in Brazil. We wish we were staying here a little longer than just a layover. We were so excited to have acai here. We thought we were going to have an oak berry, but it turns out it's in a different terminal. But we already had Guarana in the lunch, so I think we're good. We already took two flights. The last one was an overnight flight, so we're a bit um, <laughs> groggy at the moment. But yeah. We're also excited. And we're excited to try to figure everything out when we get to Bolivia because we know nothing. <laughs> Pretty much. So uh, come along. We've landed in country 94. <laughs> We have landed in Santa Cruz de la Sierra, which is the largest city in the country, but it's not the capital, and we're not really gonna spend too much time here. It's just kind of our port of entry, but we're so excited for everything we're doing on this trip. We're going out into nature. It's gonna be so much fun. For some reason, it really feels like we landed out in the bush. Because we're just surrounded by small shrubs and no fence. It doesn't really feel like we've landed in the biggest city in Bolivia. <laughs> Just like that, we've arrived at our hotel and wow, this view is crazy. So we've had a pretty much a 24 hour travel day now. So we're gonna take a shower, maybe rest a little bit, uh, get some food. We only have this afternoon here in Santa Cruz and tomorrow morning we're heading into nature, which is so, so exciting seeing one of the top places in all of Bolivia and perhaps all of South America, to be honest. It's 4 p.m. We've barely eaten all day, so we're gonna walk 25 minutes to a vegan restaurant. Then we're gonna try to catch an Uber into the city center and explore. So just based on the drive from the airport here in Santa Cruz, I can already tell this is unlike anywhere we've been in South America. It's so much drier that in a way it almost reminds me of Rwanda more than any other place we've been. Of course, very different from the rest of Bolivia that we're about to see over the coming weeks. Yeah, because this part of the country where Santa Cruz is, is the lowlands. So it's like a plain, it's very flat. But then the other half sort of of the country is the Andes. So it's super, super high altitude. That's where the two capitals are, Sucre and La Paz. This country has two capitals. Technically, Sucre is the only legal capital, but since the seat of government is in La Paz, it's usually considered the second capital. It's all pretty confusing. And La Paz is the world's highest capital at like 3,700 meters or something like that. So that's gonna be really cool to finish our trip there. All right, so granted, we're probably staying in like the nicest area of Santa Cruz, but around here, it's really, really nice. We feel very safe walking around. And it actually reminds me a lot of some of the neighborhoods in Sao Paulo, but also mostly like newer buildings. So there's not a lot of like old stuff to look at. There is one thing to look at here, the most crowded place we've seen so far, bubble tea place. Look at this. When we were in Ireland, we discovered this song that went, wherever you are around the world, you'll find an Irish pub. And it really is true. Because wherever you go around the world, you find an Irish pub. So the kitchen in that place closed five minutes before we got there. And I think we're discovering that every place here takes siestas, but we haven't had food all day. So this is not the time for us to discover that there's no restaurants open for a few hours. Not ideal, let us tell you that. We are in great mood. All right, so in the end, we decided we'll just go straight into the center of town because there are tons of restaurants there. So hopefully there's one that's open, even though it's the time. We are so angry, both of us right now. So we're trying to keep it together. Oh, 
I think everything worked out for the better because this place is so cozy. It's like a little backyard. You know, we always love checking out the local vegan food scene wherever we go. And this is just so fun being able to like go to all these like sort of remote places, I guess, by many standards. Just finding these like vegan gems. It's just so cool to see how vegan restaurants are popping up all around the world. Food. First delivery has arrived. We got a smoothie, green smoothie, and we got nachos with guacamole. Yes, nachos, I think it again. We're in Let's Latin America, so yeah. it's fine. Yeah, so it's possible. <laughs> Oh, that meal was so good. It really hit the spot. And now we are heading to the main plaza. September 14th. No, 24th. Square. Oh. <laughs> La plaza de 24 de septiembre. Which is the center of Santa Cruz. trippy because this square reminds me so much of Jakarta, Indonesia, which makes no sense. It may be Saturday night, so I think the vibes are extra good here right now, but I love the feeling here. And there's an acai place right by the square, so we're going for some acai right now. We never got the acai we truly wanted when we were in Sao Paulo earlier today, so let's make up for it. Yeah. Finally, how good do these look? We asked for seeing the champion. Is it on Brazil level? I take that as a yes. It is. Chef kiss. Holy. This is so good. I'm gonna say something controversial. I think this is better than any acai we managed to find in Brazil. I'm sure you can find acai that is at least this good or better in Brazil for sure, but holy smokes. It's getting dark, so I think it's time for us to head back to our hotel. It was so nice seeing the center of the city and getting to walk around a little bit, but the sunset combined with our early morning flight tomorrow mean we should go home. Good morning, bright and early rice and shine. <laughs> It's uh, 5.50 currently. We got up five minutes ago and we're off to the airport to catch our first semester flight within Bolivia. Going to Uyuni. Actually, we're taking two flights because we have to connect in Cochabamba. So it's going to be another fun travel day. We only have 20 kilos today, which isn't a lot for us, especially when we're going to a cold place. Excuse me. Yes, that's <laughs> because we're going to a cold place. So we've taken a lot of stuff out. When we left Sweden about a month ago, we hadn't really planned for exactly how cold it was gonna get. We each had to borrow a winter jacket from Dan's dad in New York. <laughs> they really helped us there because I don't know what would have happened otherwise. Because it gets down to negative degrees up there in the mountains. Here we go. There's no English on the <laughs> airport check-in. Uh, last name, after you. Okay. Like we said yesterday, since Constanta Cruz is basically like the economic hub in Bolivia, pretty much all international flights arrive here. But the domestic hub is not Santa Cruz. It's another city called Cochabamba, which is more centrally located within the country. So it works better as a domestic hub. But what it means is that if you're flying into Santa Cruz, you're basically going to have to take two flights in order to get anywhere other than Cochabamba if you're continuing onwards via plane. Both our flights today are like 35, 40 minutes max. <laughs> so they're very short. Where are we? I feel like we're in a safari lounge. I know, it's so cool. We're in the premium, or uh, premium, what I'm saying. We're in the priority pass lounge. Look at this, look at this view. We have this uh, like airport runway view and everything.
Oh, we made it on board. So much nicer than I expected based on the website and the livery on the outside of the plane. Oscar, I think we got an empty middle seat. Look at us, uh, even <laughs> when we barely speak the language, <laughs> we try to negotiate for good seats. Also, the leg room is so good. <laughs> Something that's really crazy to me is that now we're gonna go up to cruising altitude at uh, 11,000 meters. But the next time we land, we're still gonna be 3,700 meters up. There's gonna be an adjustment window for sure. <laughs> As we approached Cochabamba, the scenery started changing pretty drastically. While the varied landscapes of Bolivia, we passed over so many different kinds of landscapes. And right now, on one side of the plane, all the mountains are completely barren and it's like completely brown. On the other side, it's completely green. So we're like flying straight over the middle of it all. So today the temperature in Santa Cruz de la Sierra is going to be 34 degrees. Right now here in Cochabamba, we're 2,500 meters up. It's 14 degrees. <laughs> it's completely insane that in a 30 minute flight, you go from 34 degrees to 14. It's sunny outside, but the way we notice that it's so cold is that everyone is wearing down jackets. This is so insane. We were just in 30 degrees and now... Oh my god! This is so nice! I honestly prefer this temperature so much. Here's our plane, and here's our next plane. So... <laughs> I was like, should we look for seats to sit down? Yeah, for the connection? because the gate was full, <laughs> but it turns out they've already boarded. So we had a 30 second connection, and it all worked out. <laughs> That's our previous plane. <laughs> Let's just hope our bags make it. Yeah. yeah. There's only a flight to a uni every three days. <laughs> so if our bags don't make it, I don't know what we'll do, but I think they'll make it. It's a very, very tiny airport. And now we've each got a road to ourselves. Maybe like one third of the plane is tourists now. But also given that there's only one flight every three days, you can also tell that Bolivia is not a very touristy country, at least not yet, because there's very few tourists even going to the main tourist site, you know, all in all. The closer we got to a uni, the drier and more arid the landscape seemed to become. And suddenly, we could see the very thing we had come to a uni for. We made it, and the weather app says it feels like 6 degrees Celsius outside. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god, the air! Oh my god! And it, it smells so good! Oh, this is so it crazy. amazing! It feels like such a cliche. It really feels like we've landed on a different planet. It does! It feels like we're in the Arctic. Oh. It's amazing. Who needs space travel when you have the coolest and most diverse planet ever? Exactly! Ever. Guys, I just cannot tell you how nice the air feels, the smell. And we've been in 30 degree plus weather for a month. So coming to this now is a very welcome change. I don't think I've ever been to an airport before where the ground is literal gravel. <laughs> God, for a split second I was like, what's wrong? I just walked up some stairs and I'm like panting. And then I remembered altitude. <laughs> I just went to the bathroom and the water was ice, like melted ice. And the hand dryer was also cold air. So now my hands are entirely frozen and covered in soap because I couldn't bear to keep them under there. If that's any clue what the showers are like at most hotels here, 
I am scared. So this is a crazy combo of things I've never seen before. Feels like six degrees, but the UV index is 11. <laughs> so how does that go together? It's just crazy. I also have to say that this is the best type of weather to travel in because it's horrible traveling in hot weather, but you want the sun. So being able to be in a colder place, but knowing that it's always gonna be sunny is literally the best combo. Okay, so now we're in Uyuni Town, and I think we'll finish this video here and we'll show you everything else that's going down in the next video. And I think you're gonna wanna see the next one because just based off our first impressions, this place seems to be one of the most incredible places we've been in 94 countries. Literally. So yeah, yeah we cannot wait and we'll see you in the next video, but until then, see you around, around the world. world. Next time on Oscar and Dan. So you know in movies when people go to heaven, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Fuzzy. Cacti. Oh, disgusting. <sighs>